Karen Lopez, take it away. I'm Karen Lopez, I'm Data Chick, and I'm here to tell you about all my data in your systems. And just because you're schemaless or no SQL, there is absolutely no reason why you have to not think about data quality and data requirements, both data as it persists and as it comes out of your systems. So this should work. So there's four questions I can't answer about me and your systems is what is your phone number, where do you live, what's your date of birth, and what's your name? Can you believe that? This is my favorite rant that I talk about, especially in lightning talks, but even in longer things. So here's the first one. What is your home phone number? What is your work phone number? Guess what, people? Home numbers and work numbers no longer exist. How many people have both of those as two separate landlines now? Yeah, it's exactly what I thought. But yet our systems still persist on doing that. We put them on forms, we put them on screens, we store them in the database that way, and they don't exist. Then we have that other problem. See that 416, that, by the way, that's my real phone number. Feel free to call me. I will never answer the phone. But <laughs> That's a foreign area code. It belongs in Canada, and if your system screens for non-US phone numbers, you're not getting my phone number. You're getting the White House, the DEA, the NSA. Well, they already have it. So the other problem we have is, where do you live? I have no idea. I live in Canada. That's another country, by the way. And I can guarantee you there's a system someplace in your enterprise that won't print the country name on an envelope or a mailing or on a form. See that care of Canada? That's courtesy of the U.S. State Department, who has no idea that Canada is another company, country, so they have to stick a sticker on it. Then we have the Association of Information Technology Professionals that has to put a sticker on it and hand write it to mail to me. Then we have my voter registration, which thinks I'm upside down in Delaware County. And so when you ask for a, my zip code and postal code but don't take numbers, I'm telling you, I'm getting the zip code for Hell, Michigan, that's 48169, because that's where you're going when you won't take letters. What is your date of birth? Yes, that's me and my twin brother down there. I was going to be an astronaut then even. We have the same birth date. Twins, get it? Got my first, uh, got one of my driver's licenses. Date of birth on it was wrong. So I went back to the DMV and I said, you have to change my birth date. It's wrong. But you know what? You can't change your birth date in their system because whose birthdays change? Nobody's, right? So to drag my twin brother, who's also the local sheriff, down to the DMV, make him show his driver's license so they would change it to match mine. But what they really wanted me to do is go to court and prove that I was born on another day. But here's the worst one of mine, what's your name? When I first got my first US passport, they took all those funny Hispanic middle names that I had and insisted they had to be in alphabetical order. <laughs> so that meant that now I had all these IDs with different middle names, but it didn't matter, it's your passport, you're 20 years old. Who the heck cares what they put on your passport? Guess what? Fast forward just a few years later, and now it has to match everything on my boarding passes. But look at these boarding passes. This week I'm Karina. That's my spy name, by the way. But sometimes I'm Karen M, Karen MMS, Karen M, Lopez K. I'm Karina in other places. Sometimes people ship things to me at Data Chick. I think that drives Postal Service crazy. I have one of those fancy characters in my name that your computer system won't take, so people just randomly put accents over the letters. And then we also have these systems where Heaven forbid, my husband and I have different last names, but in the city of Toronto, to register my property, we had to have the same last name. So now when he kicks off and I go to get my house, I'm going to have to change my name. And then we have the Starbucks problem. Everyone has a Starbucks name, right? If you don't, you're missing out. My Starbucks name is Kitty with two Ts. And yet we get Kitte, Kenny, Kitty, Kitty, Kitty. This is the ultimate unstructured data, right? This is... Verbal data. And then we have the classic UPS. You know what this is? This is my last name. This is low, ampersand, escape, with a tilde, amp, amp, superimposed three, and pez. Your data might be in your database, right? But it isn't coming out that way. You know that, right? So here's what you must do to love your data. I want you to fight myths about names. There's a great blog post out there that lists like 100 different myths about people's names. You should go find it. You need to expand your world, and so do all your developers and people writing your reports. You need to support the full lifecycle data. That's delete, update, and insert. I don't care what your database does, but in the real world, data has to be deleted, updated, and inserted. And you need to memorize this and tell your developers, if you want your database to simple, go out and make the world simple, and then come back to me, and I will make it all simple. So, whoops. So don't ask me what my name is, what my address is, what country I live in, what my phone number is. I don't know until you tell me. So you're, keep calm, love your data, your data needs more cowbell. There's, found me. Okay.